they were used as Danish entry. They will take some uh, simple but very important steps uh, to enter the sow farm uh, to ensure the health and well-being of our pigs. As they take their shoes off, they will not touch this floor, but swing their foot over and then take the next shoe off and swing the, ne swing the next, shoe next foot over. Then they'll come into the showers. They will uh, leave the street clothes on one side, shower through, and put farm clothes on, on the other side. We're going to utilize UV light technology to disinfect all materials and supplies that come into Sandy Creek Lane. This is the same technology that water treatment plants and hospitals use. So how this works is that once a month we, we receive deliveries and that is on the dirty side or the, the side that has access to the outside. Somebody outside the farm will pass, unpackage those supplies, stack them on these wire shelves, we will close the doors and then turn the UV light on for five minutes. Then somebody who's on the inside and, and farm clothes will bring the supplies in and store them in the storage room. This is a pass-through UV light box. This is for the employees to pass their lunches through. And again, this is to, to safeguard the health and well-being of our pigs. We're in the gilt barn right now. So this is where we will develop our, our replacement gilts, or our, our, our females uh, that will become our breeding females. So they're, they're girls that have not delivered their first litter yet. They will come into this gilt nursery at 15 pounds and three weeks of age. We provide gas brooder heat, provide a microenvironment of 95 degrees because again, they just were weaned from mama uh, and, enjoy, and have enjoyed a, a warm environment. So we want to provide that warm environment here in this nursery. They have full access to feed through feeders uh, 24 hours a day. And then they got a uh, cup of waters on the other fence line, provide fresh water 24 hours a day. One of the things that is very important when we first wean a pig or remove a pig from, from, from the mother is that all it's known its entire life is milk. For the first three weeks of its life, all that pig knows is mama's milk. And, and, and nursing or feeding for that pig has been a social event. So in order to, tr to, to facilitate the transition from mama's milk to feed and water, we are using these nipple bars, which simulates nursing on mama. We got a bunch of nipples in a row, so when one pig comes up and makes some noise, the next pig comes up, the next pig comes up, and the next pig comes up. And so that facilitates them finding that water quicker, and the quicker a pig finds water, the healthier it is, and the faster he finds water, the faster he'll start on feed. So again, we designed this environment to ensure a, a rapid and well transition from mama's milk to feed. So this is the pre-training room. We have to train our gilts to use the electronic sow feeding stations. And to do that, it's a multi-step process. So we have the center fence line with, the, with these one-way gates. On one side of the fence line, we have full access to feed. On the other side, we have full access to fresh water. And with these one-way gates, we are trying to train gills to uh, walk through doors that they will encounter on the feeding stations. When they we first bring gills in, we'll lock all these doors open to allow them to find feed on one side, water on the other. Once, once we are confident they know where feeding water is, we'll let these gates swing closed and then monitor these gilts throughout the next several days and make sure they're able to operate these doors to get from one side to the other. All these rooms, you can see as we move down through the barn, get bigger and bigger. We're not putting any more pigs in there. We're just giving them more and more room to live. From start to finish, uh, we shipped over the course of probably two and a half months. Um, for all the buildings on the site. This particular complex obviously took a lot of material. Um, almost all of it um, came from the Charleston area. And it's always exciting when you drive by one of these complexes and know that you had a part of it. So this is training. As you can see, we have four miniature versions of the full-size stations that you've seen over in the gestation barn. So these are miniature versions of the full-size stations with no electronics, no ear tag required. And how this is set up is that when we first bring a gilt in, or we first bring a group of gilts in, we lock these back doors open and we chain open that middle gate and then also lock open that exit gate. And we, and we allow the gilts to come in from any direction to find feed for the first two to three days. Once, we know, once we're confident they know where feed is, we start closing these doors down and individually guiding gilts into these stations. So by day nine, we know who are the quick learners and who are the 
not so quick learners. So at that time, we leave the quick learners in this section of the pin, and we close off the pins over here, and we can, we can concentrate all of our attention on those 20% that are hard learners on the single training station. This whole process takes about two weeks for them to learn how to run, run through these uh, feeding stations. So after the two weeks of training is complete in the training room, we bring the gilts in here and we, we group them in pens based on their expected breed date. They got the same trainer, training station, the miniature version of the full size station, still no electronics, just a single hole finisher feeder in front, but then this just reinforces the training that those gilts just, just received. And this design also allows us to, if we still have some slow learners, we can continue to work with them in smaller groups in this barn. Then after this stage, when, they're, we, got, when we know they're gonna come into heat next, and they're, they're, they're old enough and big enough, we will move them to the gestation barn and breed them in there. So this room is the breeding room. So after uh, the sow pharaohs, the mother pig delivers her pigs, and she nurses those pigs for three weeks. We wean those piglets off the sow, or, we, or we, we, we remove them from the sow, and we send them to another farm to grow out to market size. Uh, that sow, that mother pig, then comes in, into the breeding room where she's uh, housed individually. We can give her full access to feed with individual feeders. She has water available to her 24 hours a day. And it's at this time that uh, we will detect when that sow is receptive for breeding again. Uh, a pig's heat cycle uh, uh, will allow them to come into heat approximately six days after we remove her pigs from her. We have caretakers that are trained to detect when she is receptive to breeding. Some signs of heat is that uh, a sow will stand really rigid. Her ears will be perked, uh, when, especially when there's a more exposure in front of her. She'll have a, uh, a red vulva and a clear discharge. We use uh, equipment such as uh, a bore bot that leads a bore around. The bore bot is on a remote control that we can put a, a, a harness on our bore. We can train a bore to a harness and then that will lead them in front of the sows in order for our caretakers to walk from behind and detect when she is ready to breed. For the actual breeding process, we, everything will be bred through artificial insemination. Most uh, sows will receive two, uh, two inseminations before moving on to the next stage. So after we breed the sow, the mother pig in the breeding room, we will move her to the gestation barn. Uh, again, she'll be housed in an individual sow stall we will set her feeding level according to her needs, and she has free access to water 24-7. These stalls were designed about 40 years ago to protect the sow from feed aggression of other sows that she was housed with and to provide individual care. At approximately five weeks of gestation, we will use an ultrasound machine similar to this to confirm pregnancy in that sow and we look for a pregnancy similar to as when, when our wives go and get uh, examined for, with ultrasound for, uh, for their pregnancies. And then after pregnancy is confirmed, we remove her from these individual stalls to pen gestations. So we got MPS Agri uh, that we partnered with on this farm to provide electronic sow feeding stations. The MPS Agri automatic electronic sow feeding station is designed to allow us to keep uh, a large number of sows in a group but still treat each animal as an individual. Uh, each, each individual sow will have its own RFID uh, ear tag which allows us to identify the animal as it walks into the feeding stations and as they walk in and are identified it talks to the computer based in the computer room and will allocate to that individual animal the amount that they're programmed for that particular day. So it gives us maximum control uh, over the, the entire herd uh, and each, each individual animal can be allocated an entirely unique amount of feed. So we're optimizing the feed usage and therefore enhancing the ability to produce as many piglets as possible for those individual animals. And so the default position for these feeding stations is the doors are open. As the sow walks in, she has to push the center gate open, which closes the back door. This is key because this protects the sow from feed aggression of other sows. Once, she's, once the sow is standing in this feeding station, there's an antenna in the feed bowl that reads her electronic ear tag. 
and then it will say that this sow is due five pounds of feed today. And it will drop a quarter pound of feed every 15 seconds, along with a squirt of water, because sows like to eat moist feed. And she can leave anytime she wants, but 95% of the sows will walk through, eat their full allotment of feed before leaving again. And to leave, they just walk out that door, push open that last door, and then there's one more door they have to put, they walk through on the other side of that concrete wall. And that's the other port, that's the other design of how these electronic cell feeding systems work. As you just as you just asked, what are all these areas here? These are bedroom areas. And so if that sow wants to come back and eat again, she's got to do the NASCAR lap and come all the way around the route we just took and come to get back in line. Because sows, the pigs are hierarchical. They know there's a boss hog sow and they know there's ones that are more timid, okay? So if we did not have these walls here, uh, an aggressive sow could come back and chase other sows away and get back in line. But she's gotta come all the way around and get back in line. And by the time she gets to the end, she sees some buddies over there, she's gonna lay down in these bedroom areas and take a nap. When you have sows in here, three quarters of them are laying along like hot dogs in a package because they choose to lay in close physical contact with each other. And then the other quarter kind of milling around, nosing around looking for crumbs. Then water is also supplied uh, uh, as, they, uh, as they enter the enter this feeding stations and as they exit the feeding stations. Here's an example of an RFID tag right here. This combined with the pin design allows us to individually care and feed for a pig. When, the, when a sow comes through here, it will not only know how much to give her, but then we can get a report to know how much she actually ate and when she ate. And it's really interesting. Sows will pick a time once we form a pin. Sows will pick a time when they eat and they'll get up nearly identical time every day and go eat. And they all know when their turn is. And they'll get up in groups. It's kind of like uh, uh, high school where you got, you, 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 everybody finds their little cliques. This bedroom area will get up and eat. The next bedroom area will get up and eat and they'll all go lie down together. This will be the, the biggest, most unique system in Illinois currently and um, the, the, the system that we're adapting it is tried and tested but certainly from a scale and from a technology point of view it's, it's very unique. This is the pharaoh room or the birthing room. This is where our, our sows or our mother pigs deliver, deliver their piglets. Uh, these individual uh, maternity pins were developed to protect our newborn pigs from crushing from the sow. During the farrowing process or the birthing process, uh, we will have caretakers that monitor the progression of that farrowing process. So uh, we'll write the time down that we observed her, how many pigs she has born alive, and if we assisted her at all. Again, we monitor these sows during the, the farrowing or the birthing process at least every 30 minutes and provide assistance. As a pig's being born, they pick up a towel and towel dry it and set it underneath one of these heat lamps. We also ensure that uh, each pig gets uh, a belly full of mama's first milk, which is called colostrum. We've got feed provided to the sows 24 hours a day on these, on these cell feeders here, wa fresh water 24 hours a day. We have uh, two environments we have to maintain in this room. We've got the heat lamp. Underneath the heat lamp, we try to keep it 95 degrees to keep those baby pigs nice and warm. And we also have the environment we have to look for after for the sow, which we try to keep around 70 degrees. So we're, we're managing two environments in here. So here at Santa Creek Lane, uh, we vaccinate our pigs uh, the same way we, the same reason we vaccinate our own children is to provide immunity to common diseases that they'll encounter in, in, their, in their lifetimes. Uh, that's to ensure, again, the health and well-being of our pigs. And this is Pat McArath with Pulse Free Needle Systems. He'll be uh, demonstrating how he will, will use a, an injector to administer vaccines through the use of air rather than uh, through the use of a needle. With our system here, this is our Pulse Needle Free Injection System where uh, we don't use a needle, we're using CO2 or compressed air to uh, power the vaccine and blow it through such a fine hole that it, we can go in the skin through the muscle to administrate the vaccine. It will not inject until you slide the safety over. Once you slide the safety over, then once you apply enough pressure okay. to the tip. Okay, let's see that action. And now it really gotcha. it. Gotcha. With the system we have here today on this processing cart for baby pigs, uh, it's considered a hands-free where you do not have to hold the injector. 
uh, we, you have both hands free to hold the pig and you bring the pig up against the in needle free injector and it releases the vaccine on contact. The primary ingredients in feed is uh, corn and soybeans. All the corn and soybeans will be grown locally and uh, sourced locally from a local feed mill and that will be stored uh, out in the feed bins out in front of the barns and then it will be augered in to uh, the, the different barns and in, this, in the farrowing room here or the birthing room uh, these lines will run multiple times a day to ensure that these tubes and these feeders are full of feed so the sow, the mother pig, has full access to feed 24 hours a day and she has, also has free access to fresh water 24 hours a day. So this is the controller room. This is where we have a maxim, Maximum Ag Technologies uh, where their uh, controller or their computer will control all the fans, all the heaters, all the cooling systems on the farm to keep conditions at ideal conditions for the pig. And it's also got connectivity to the internet so wherever I'm at, I can pull my phone out and I can tell you exactly what's going on in every single room of this farm. I'll just go through and kind of quickly explain a few things. So this is actually what we call the brain of it. There's actually gonna be four brains on this site. This one here is doing the gestation bar. Um, each one of these icons kind of takes them through each different aspect of the farm itself. So one neat little option we have here, this is a barn overview. This kind of gives us a quick glance view of everything going on within that building right now. All these other boxes you see, these are just housing the actual electronic side of it. So you can manually walk up to them and operate them. Those are for the changes systems. So we are actually controlling all the feeding as well throughout the building. So. And that, that, that's an important point. So as you can see, we have a, a lot of technology, a lot of electronics, you know, mo modern electronics here. And so we need to make sure we're using that to, to provide care for our pigs, but we also have, have, need to have backup for that. And when you pulled up today or maybe when you leave today, take note on that uh, outside, we have four generators. We have two really big generators. One of those generators is the, is the backup for our farrowing barn, our birthing barn. The second generator is the backup for our gestation barn and our gilt barn. Then we, have a, then we have two additional generators. Those are the backups of the backups. So if the main generator doesn't kick in, we've got a smaller generator that will kick in to take its place and that will help run the minimum fans and lights. So on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, we, we will have our managers that will oversee uh, the settings on the controllers, make sure they're operating correctly. But it's also we have to rely on our, on our individual caretakers to use essentially their senses to know if, if something is operating correctly or incorrectly. Is it too hot? Is it too cold? You always look at the pig. Well, regardless of what, what standards you set or what set points you set on these controllers, you look at the individual pigs and they will tell you if they are comfortable or not comfortable. So all the air, all the fresh air for this barn comes in on the gable ends up into the attic and then comes down through the ceiling inlets. These black uh, things on the ceiling, these are, our, these are our ceiling inlets. Now in the summertime, that air will be cooled by the use of, of what we call cool cell pads. It's evaporative cooling. So when it's, when it's 90 degrees outside, it's 80 degrees inside the barn. Uh, so all the air comes in through these ceiling inlets and these inlets, how far open or closed they are is controlled by a ventilation controller or a computer. Uh, and that helps direct, helps control the temperature, the fans, uh, the heaters and the cooling systems for all, all of the barns here at Santa Creek Lane. In the winter time, these panels will be all the way up and all the air will be controlled coming into the barn through the ceiling inlets, which again, you can see the cable that controls how open or closed they are. Then as it warms up, like days like today, these, these panels will come down and this curtain will drop and it will pull air across these pigs to keep them cool. So underneath our barns, we have uh, pits to collect manure from the pigs. What we will do, according to the regulations, we will soil test, we will test the manure in the pit each year, and then we know our cropping history, what we're going to be doing, and that's how we will determine the rate of application. And Mike loves the land that he farms. He wanted to do the best thing he could for his land. And by doing that, he wanted to participate in the oldest recycling program known to man. And that's where we grow corn locally, we grow soybeans locally, which are the primary ingredients in pig feed. And we feed those corn and soybeans to pigs. We, we feed it in a feed that meets or exceeds their nutri nutritional requirement. And then we collect the manure produced by those pigs in these pits. 
and that manure is organic fertilizer. We want to keep a good, healthy soil. That's the whole advantage of hog manure or any manure versus commercial fertilizer. And then we use this organic fertilizer in our pits to fertilize next year's crops, which feeds next year's pigs. And it's going to be a good, good long-term advantage to the health of the soil. Raise our organic matter, water holding capacity, less erosion, that's what I'm after.